So, no, I, I wouldn't say I have a passion for HR. Welcome back to Human Resources for the People. It's a human capital revolution. Today we're going to be diving into a crucial aspect of workplace safety and compliance, completing the OSHA 300 log. Uh, OSHA Forum 300, also known as the Log of Work-Related Injuries and Illnesses, is a vital record that helps you track and report incidents in your workplace. I'll provide you with some valuable tips to efficiently and accurately complete OSHA th Forum 300, ensuring you stay compliant and prioritize the well-being of your workforce. Before we start, it's important to understand the purpose of OSHA 3 Form 300. This form serves as a comprehensive record of all work related injuries and illnesses that occurred during the year. By maintaining this log, you not only comply with OSHA regulations, but also gain insights into your workplace's safety trends and areas that require attention. Before you get started, it's important to know whether or not you even co are covered by the OSHA Form 300. Uh, generally speaking, businesses with 10 or more employees must maintain and submit these records. However, certain industries such as healthcare and manufacturing might have additional reporting requirements, so check with your legal uh, counsel. Assuming that you qualify, we can then get started. The OSHA 300 form is on the links down below, so if you need it, take a look down there. Uh, you first off start with the case number um, and then put in the employee's name. Now this is private information, so don't worry too much about that. This is for your own records. Uh, you will not be publishing this information. You then go uh, put the job title, of course, it's the HR manager that is getting uh, hurt in this situation and they got hurt on March 7th, which is the month and the day, easy peasy. Next up, you have to put where the event occurred. You don't have to be super specific. Um, you know, it's not one that uh, matters that much. Uh, you know, looking over this form, I, it's very easy to complete, I think, um, and, and really not the, not the worst form the government has ever put out, in my opinion. Uh, so, it then continues and will uh it, it, it's important for you to understand what it looks like so this person of course got hurt in the front office and dropped a stapler on their foot uh, you need to describe the injury or illness and the parts of body that are affected uh, and this resulted in unfortunate death of course uh, but classify whatever happened um, including the days away from work and the injury make sure you hit the uh, uh, establishment name up in the top right corner as well as the city and state and then put the year that this happened uh, then you can go down and, and really the OSHA form is kind of great for this uh, it automatically calculates the total number of deaths total number of uh, cases with days away from work and the total number of cases with job uh, transfer as restrictions um, there is another important piece to this that OSHA allows you to capture and we'll be talking about that next. Uh, the uh, the establishment information is pretty effective uh, for completing this. Make sure that you do include the establishment information uh, because it is required and then you sign down below. For the purposes of this, you also need to calculate the total recordable case rate as well as the DART incident rate. Um, both are important for the purposes of this exercise. To get the total number, uh, to get the total recordable case rate, you take the total number of injuries and illnesses which you wrote in the OSHA 300 log, and multiply them by 20,000, which is uh, the amount of hours uh, 100 employees would have working 40 hours per week, 50 weeks per year, and that provides the standard baseline for calculating incident rates. Then you have the total number of hours worked by all employees. So you take every, all the hours worked by all employees and you get the total total recordable case rate. Then from the OSHA 300, you total up the number of uh, entries in column H and column I and multiply them by 200,000, which uses the exact same uh, you know, information. Uh, the 100 employees multiplied by 40 hours by 50 weeks per year. You again then uh, do that number of hours worked by all employees uh, and that gets you your DART rate, DART incident rate, which is the days away from, uh, you compute the incident rate for the recordable cases involving days away from work, days of restricted work activity or job transfer DART using that formula. And there you have it, valuable tips for completing OSHA Form 300 by understanding the purpose of the form in identifying covering employers, gathering incident information, you're well on your way. Like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye, guys.